Hello, this is Mike at Game from Scratch, and welcome back to our ongoing Game Dev Toolbox series. This is a look at the essential tools for game development, be it for programmers, designers, audio guys, uh, you name it. So we cover the whole spectrum of game development tools, and today we're going to cover one that is kind of unique in the whole spectrum, actually, because this one is for game designers, and it's called Artisy Draft. Uh, now, if you've never heard of it, Artisy Draft is available from uh, Nevigo, uh, nevigo.com, uh, so here is their actual homepage instead of going straight to their store. Um, this is pretty much the only product they make. Now, this is not a free product or even, well, arguing if something's cheap or not is a little bit relative, but this is not um, a low-end tool by any means. It's not outrageously expensive, but you'll see here it's 255 euro uh, for a single person or subscription is looking at about eight bucks a month or $84 a year. Now, it's also available on Steam and you can see here it is available for um, $250 Canadian right now, so probably about 200 US. And then uh, the older version is available for $125 or probably $99 US. So uh, again, this is not a completely free product by any definition, but if this is for you, it is well worth the money uh, for what it does anyways. And we're going to jump into that in just one second. Now, one thing I want to point out, though, it's on Steam. That means it's on sale periodically. The best I've seen is 30% off, but do keep an eye out if this is a product you're interested in. Now, as I said earlier, this is entirely for designers. Now, this is a program I'm actually going to be covering in a lot more depth in an upcoming post. So I'm not going to go that deep. I mostly just want to introduce it to you so you have an idea of what it is. Now, if you want more details about it, do stay tuned for the to the channel. I'm going to have something up very shortly showing you a bit more in depth, you know, from the beginning, how things work. And then here I've got um, Maniac Manfred um, example project open. You can see the workflow is very straightforward and very clean. So you can see it right here. Now you pick anything. It's going to ultimately bring you to the same uh, basic area so we'll get that going right now so you'll see here down the left hand side you're basically using this to make the various aspects of your game and this is all about designers prototyping the game so if you're trying to do things like dialogue trees or design how program flow is going to work how levels are going to work etc um, that's exactly what this tool is for and as I said it's somewhat unique the only other tools kind of like it are probably you know, custom databases, Excel spreadsheets, uh, Visio for flowchart or, or um, diagramming, and that kind of stuff, and possibly, you know, mind mapping software. It kind of brings all of those things together, but in a game specific format. Now, one other thing I should mention, and there is a price tag attached to this, and this is brand new, and I haven't actually even worked with it yet, but Nevergo also now have uh, the ability, let me go back here to the products. I think it's right here. And we can now export to a custom C++ runtime. So you can use this to create your game um, flow, but you can now also export it out so that it can work in uh, your game itself. So there is a C++ runtime available, but you do have to buy it. And it's part of, it should have been there under uh, flex licensing. <sighs> Anyways, it's, it's another, I think $40 a month. So it's by no means free, but if you want to actually use this as like the database engine behind your game, uh, there is a C++ runtime available and there is a Unity plugin available. So you can actually use this to author game data. Uh, but as it stands just on its own, this is more of a design tool. This is not really for creating that stuff. You would go ahead and recreate it in your engine. But now there is this opportunity to actually have a runtime. So have this populating uh, the, the data behind your engine, which is huge if you're working on something massive like a role-playing game. And this actually has been used to make or design commercial grade role playing games. Uh, Might and Magic X was designed using this. And probably most impressively, so was Star Citizen. Now, the fact that Star Citizen never actually shipped and the design scope is outrageous cannot be placed on uh, Artificy uh, Draft, the blame there, anyways. Uh, so here you can see you kind of got your, your basic flow. You can do things like you set up global variables, um, game states, things that happen throughout the game. And you can actually create these flow charts that um, toggle off these variables, as we'll see in a minute. So here you can see the flow of the game and you see a high level version of it like so it's got different levels as pictures you've got the descriptions as they go in uh, you, you can flow in between so basically you can see that our game is going very simple game uh, right mouse button is panning around middle mouse button zooming we can see we start off in the cell we move on to the corridor and then either into the lobby or the call um, the seller based off which way you go and then off to the game end and you'll see there's conditions here so you can map out the flow of your game we'll get into this in a lot more detail in a second now at the same time you can see each one of these details so you can see you know there is a basic flow of how you will proceed through the cell for example and we'll go into um, 
you know, one of these different rooms. So here you can see Manfred is uh, your main character in here. You can see the various inputs come in and the program flow that will go with it. At the same time, let me go back to, uh, Did I want one second? So you can see here the different pieces that go together to make this sector of, all the, of cell. And we come up here, you can see we have closed door, then the therapist comes in. So we look at the therapist, we'll bring that up. And you can see now, if I click here, you can use this for creating the dialogue trees for the different characters that populate the world. And this gets pretty complex, pretty simple. So you can see, or pretty quickly. So you can see here the flow starts. You kind of can come in. Uh, Oh my dear, you're recovering from the anesthesia. How are you feeling? And then based off of how you uh, respond, you branch off accordingly, branch off accordingly, you can loop back, and so on and so forth. So you can use this to, and then jump between different areas. So there, you know, it like uh, more questions, loop back in this particular case. And this is the dialogue tree that you've seen in so many games. Well, this is a way of basically um, designing it. And the cool thing is you can actually do this in script form and dump it in and it will automatically create this for you. Um, now you'll notice here we're using a number of characters. So we've got um, Dr. RDC here and Manfred here. Now if I scroll down here and leave the flow. So we've seen an example of how you know you'd flow chart your game and then within the game you can flow chart your conversations etc. Uh, we've also got here so entities, characters. So here is Dr. RDC as we've defined. Uh, here is Manfred, our main guy. So you can use this to populate the entities within your world. Now you may be wondering, okay, where is this coming from? So you see here's like a description, ID. So you could have it, you know, linked to the assets attached to this guy, voice recordings for him, uh, for each line of dialogue, etc. But you see it's populated here from a template. So we could go here, we choose a template. So this is using the character template. And the template can be thought of as just a form for data. So if we wanted to create our own template, so here I'm gonna go ahead and do edit, edit on the template. And here you can see the template in action being edited. So we can add all these different fields and forms to it. Uh, and then let me just cancel out of here. I'll actually show you the template. So we cancel that. So you can create basically these forms that you can use to populate the various data for your game. Now come down here, here are the, template, the templates themselves. And that was uh, da, 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 characters, uh, entities, character. So there you can see the form being used. So you got the different parameters, the different icons, etc. That you know, so you can put in an age, who the voice actor is, their background story, etc. And as we saw earlier, we can change these forms to be whatever you want. Now this doesn't have to just be your character. You can do this for um, the items and the inventories in your game. Uh, so if you've got you know, swords, etc., kind of thing. You can define it this way as well. And we also saw here, we can define the locations. Like for example, here is the cell uh, being prototyped. And the neat thing here is if you visually create them like this, this image we got here, we can start linking them together. So you can see the various pieces of um, entities within it. So we've got our doctor here, our door here. So you can see it's uh, hot linked around it. So now by clicking that, should take me there. Uh, we can branch through our world and prototype how our world should link together and so on and so forth and all the entities in our world, etc. Now another neat thing we can do here is come down here into something called like the journey. We can actually flow through the game. So we can basically preview our game in slideshow form. So here we are kind of flipping through it. And you can see the various different inputs and outputs where it goes and you can prototype your game and start walking through your game or your the dialogue you've created the interactions between users etc and that is essentially um all i'm going to show you today because i don't want to go into a great deal more detail but you do have a pretty good idea of exactly what this program is it's very unique it is sort of again for um, designing the entities and interactions and all the little pieces that go together to create your game. Now I'd be rambling on and on and on, so I don't, oops, let's get out of here, that's why it keeps popping me back. All right. So if you're a designer, you can you can string these things together uh, very, very quickly. So this, and the, the neat thing that it actually can propagate out to um, code that can be interacted with with your Unity application or using the C++ runtime. And coincidentally, there are C Sharp bindings for that runtime and there are C89 bindings for it. So you can basically interact with this data 
for an added cost in just about any game engine you want. But even if you're not using that, this is one of the quickest uh, prototyping or game design tools out there. And in fact, it's the only purpose-built one that I know of. And generally, as I said earlier, you would end up doing this kind of thing in a bunch of Word documents or using uh, flowcharts in a program like Visio, which costs like $900, by the way. Uh, or various mind mapping software, etc. So you basically would string all these things together. Well, this is a, a system that is designed specifically for designing game flows. It's very polished, it works very well. I've never experienced a crash, I've never experienced a slowdown. Um, things just work. Now there is a learning curve attached here, uh, but it's not really all that outrageous. And you're essentially writing your game in here as a gigantic choose your own adventure, if you will. So you are doing things like setting up global states, global variables, if you wish. So you can have an inventory system if you want with the various definitions, various types. Of different. And then those flowcharts we we're seeing earlier are interacting with those. So you are essentially kind of programming here if you wish to get into that detail. So this can be a very complicated system, but it is very, very approachable. And if you're a non-programmer, you are a game um, designer that wants to deal with things like conversations, um, program flow, program design. You want to test drive, you know, on paper, in quote, air quotes around that one, how your game works before it's implemented. This is the tool for that. So as I said, I'm going to get into this in a lot more detail in another post, um, both in text and video form. So please do stay tuned for that if you're interested in learning more. So once again, this has been Artisy Draft. Uh, from Nevigo, and it is a very cool program if you are a designer. Hope you enjoyed that, and we do these kind of things all the time. There's an entire backlog of um, in the Game Dev Toolbox. If you're interested, I will link the uh, playlist down below. I hope you did enjoy that. If you did, please do click like and subscribe. We got all kinds of stuff just like this, and more coming soon. See you all later. Bye.